Because you work in the environment, you're really tuned into it. Because you're there every day. If the whales are late, you go, oh, the whales are a month late, or the tuna are getting big now. And you go, oh, look, the crabs are down, or oh, the squid's down. You're in tune with everything. And we've been here for so long. We're part of the ecosystem as far as, as, far as we're concerned. You know, every year I come, and within minutes, the dolphins are here, the seagulls turned up. We just, yeah, blend in. Well, sort of the ocean's been a part of my life since I was little, and it always just sort of had a mysterious sort of hold on me. Just the excitement of it, really. The, um, like, oh, I haven't seen a traffic light since February last year. And being able to work and enjoy my job, like if you, you know, if you enjoy your job, you never work a day in your life, they say. And that's sort of how, yeah, that's my, my deal at the moment. There's two types of people that go on boats. There's fishermen, and there's boat drivers. Anybody can drive a boat. Fishermen are there for the long haul. They're there for the environment. They're there because they like being there. I say to my crew, do not throw that fruit skin in the water. Why? Because that fruit did not come from here. It came from somewhere else. It's not part of the, your environment. You must have respect for the environment, for the product, for the, everything. We always want to touch the earth lighter today than we did yesterday. So if you look at the way we fish, less boats, more targeted fishing, obviously got all the bycatch reduction devices, turtle exclusion devices, all those sorts of things. There's a physical thing about that fishery that's always made it unique, and that is it's a fairly small geography. It's not a big open fishery. It's at like 30 miles long by 20 miles wide, and yet it produces everything. When my father went there, there was a sheep station at the bottom of Exmouth Gulf. There was a raft base, which was in very much caretaker mode nearby. And there was a lighthouse at the top of the Cape. And they went round, built a factory, then they built a bar, then they built all the supporting infrastructure and they started building houses. We built a community there, just accumulated people who wanted to make the impossible happen. This was the end of the dirt road. You came here. You could tell me your name was anything. And we didn't care what you did in your past life, as long as you didn't bring it to us. We own all the licenses in Exmouth Gulf. We create that culture in our fleet that, guys, this is our pond. We're not here to catch more than that guy who might get there before we do. That sets a really nice tone for that fishery that is, is very unique. We can open up areas, and, and if somebody's fishing on to find some small prawns, He'll just ring up the fleet and say, there's some small prawns here, he'll move and everyone will leave them alone. We're able to set at a culture of, we're actually here to get the best outcomes for this year, next year, and the next 10 years. So that sense of custodianship is very, very strong. Like our catch cry is sustainability. We have MSC certification, I have cameras, and always proactive. You have to be. You don't get a job here unless you have that outlook. It's called the Kalis way. Not just anybody can do it. You must have respect for, your, for the seafood. You have to understand, the next person that owns this box could be your mother. Okay, well, like growing up in South Louisiana, um, seafood was on the menu every night. You know, we live very close to the Gulf, so I look out a daily, you know, and just go, that's where the prime item on our menu's coming from there. You can't get any fresher or closer to the product. Any celebration, any gathering, any barbecue, cook up, whatever, hey, there's always gonna be food, there's always gonna be X amount of prawns, because we're, we're in prawn country, you know, here. You could bet that most people living in Exmouth in 2011 had either worked for us or been around us. So without any work, we'd already created that connection with the community. When we closed the factory, this deep community connection that's been naturally created now needs to be nurtured. It's 
it has everything um, that dreams are made of. You know, you've got humpback whales, you've got thriving um, diversity of you know, fresh seafood. I know my anchors are set here in town and um, we're not ever going to break our ties for the next month. I've done this my whole working life. I'd like to see other people come into the business and do the same deal for the same love of the thing, you know, of the environment, of the prawns. An epiphany, I guess you'd say. So the sun was setting on the back of the canyons. It was flat calm and we were pulling the anchor. And as the sun was setting, a whale and its baby were just jumping all over the place. And that was, for me, that was a, yeah, I love my job. This is, this is where I'm happy and this is where I want to be, you know. If you don't nurture what you have, you have nothing. And I'm here for the long haul. I like doing what I do, you know? I love being a fisherman.